Welcome to my channel Pharma Health Insights. Welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss a topic that looks very simple on the surface but has serious regulatory and compliance implications in real life. AHU versus HVAC. Most of us use these terms interchangeably in daily conversations. But inspectors never do. Over the years, I've seen well-designed plants, modern facilities, and experienced teams still struggle during audits, not because they lacked infrastructure, but because of conceptual gaps. This session is about closing that gap, practically, clearly, and honestly. Let me start by putting you into a situation that many of you may immediately relate to. Imagine an auditor walking through your plant. Everything looks impressive, chillers are new, ducts are clean, control panels are modern. The confidence level is high. Then the auditor asks a simple question, how do you ensure that air from this area does not contaminate the adjacent area? And suddenly, the room becomes quiet. This is where many plants realize something very important. Compliance is not about how modern your HVAC looks, it's about how well your AHUs are designed, controlled, and justified. To understand why this happens, we need to clearly understand what HVAC actually represents. HVAC is the backbone of environmental control for the entire facility. It ensures that air is generated, cooled or heated, humidified or dehumidified, and then distributed across different areas of the building. At a broader level, HVAC is responsible for maintaining stable conditions such as temperature, humidity, and air circulation, which are essential for smooth day-to-day -day operations. However, and this is a critical point, HVAC by itself does not decide how contamination risks are controlled inside clean rooms. It provides the support framework, but it does not execute GMP control. Let's now break HVAC down into its major components. An HVAC system is made up of multiple components, each performing a specific function. Chillers and boilers are responsible for generating the heating or cooling energy. Cooling towers and pumps help in rejecting heat and circulating utilities. Ducting and exhaust systems move air across the facility, while the building management system monitors and controls overall performance. Among all these components, AHS play a unique role because they directly condition and filter the air supplied to controlled areas. This is why, from a GMP perspective, not all HVAC components carry the same level of criticality. So now let's shift our focus to the most critical element, the AHU. In pharmaceutical manufacturing, an AHU is not just another piece of HVAC equipment. It is the unit that directly supplies conditioned and filtered air to clean rooms and controlled areas. By doing so, the AHU plays a key role in maintaining area classification, controlling pressure differentials, and ensuring that air moves in the intended direction. Because the air supplied by the AHU comes in direct contact with the manufacturing environment, it has a direct impact on product quality. That is why, in pharma, AHS are treated as critical GMP utilities, not merely mechanical systems. To understand this importance, let's look inside an AHU. Inside an AHU, each component has a specific role in maintaining GMP control. Pre-filters and fine filters remove larger particulates and protect downstream components, while HEPA filters ensure the required cleanroom classification is achieved. Fans and blowers maintain the necessary airflow volume, and dampers help control airflow direction and pressure balance between areas. Sensors and control instruments continuously monitor system performance and provide alarms when conditions move out of limits. Together, these components ensure that air quality remains controlled, consistent, and compliant. Now that we understand both systems individually, let's clearly differentiate them. The key difference between HVAC and AHU lies in their roles within the facility. HVAC operates at a facility level, providing the overall infrastructure that supports environmental control across the building. AHS, on the other hand, function at the clean room and process area level, where actual control of air quality and pressure takes place. Because AHUs directly influence the manufacturing environment, they have a direct impact on GMP compliance, whereas HVAC plays a more supportive role. Understanding this distinction is essential for designing, operating, and auditing pharmaceutical facilities. This difference becomes crystal clear during audits. During audits, inspectors evaluate AHS through a risk-based approach. Their primary concern is whether the AHU design and operation can consistently prevent contamination and maintain controlled conditions. 
They closely examine how EHRs are zoned, how pressure differentials are maintained between areas, and whether airflow moves in the intended direction. Filter integrity, especially HEPA filters, and the frequency of revalidation are also key focus areas. Overall, auditors are not looking for complexity, but for clear logic, consistent control, and effective risk management. Let's now look at common mistakes that repeatedly appear across plants. One of the most common mistakes seen in pharmaceutical facilities is the assumption that installing HVAC automatically ensures GMP compliance. Once the system is commissioned, teams often feel that compliance is achieved and further review is not required. However, GMP does not work on assumptions. It requires that controls are intentionally designed, clearly justified, and consistently demonstrated. When a HU design philosophy and control logic are not properly reviewed and documented, this assumption often leads to audit observations. The next mistake often arises from cost optimization. In many facilities, a single AHU is used to serve multiple manufacturing or support areas as a cost-saving or space-saving measure. While this may appear efficient from an engineering perspective, it creates challenges from a GMP standpoint. When different processes with different risk profiles are handled by one AHU, the potential for cross-contamination increases. During audits, justifying such a configuration becomes difficult, especially when clear segregation and risk control cannot be demonstrated. Another mistake is more subtle, but equally dangerous. Another common mistake occurs when HVAC and AHU systems are designed using principles meant for office or commercial buildings. In such cases, the focus is primarily on human comfort, temperature stability and energy efficiency. However, pharmaceutical facilities are fundamentally different. The primary objective is not comfort, but product protection. When comfort-based design logic is applied without considering GMP risks, critical controls related to airflow, pressure, and contamination prevention may be underestimated. So what do regulations actually expect from AHUs? Although different regulatory guidelines are followed across regions, their expectations for AHUs are largely aligned. Whether it is revised Schedule M, WHO GMP, EU GMP, or US FDA, the core focus remains the same, control, consistency, and effective risk management. Regulators expect AHUs to be designed with a clear GMP rationale, validated appropriately, and monitored on an ongoing basis. The emphasis is not on how advanced the system is, but on how reliably it can maintain control conditions. And these expectations translate into specific checkpoints. These are the key checkpoints auditors typically focus on when evaluating AHU compliance. They look for a clearly defined AHU zoning philosophy that supports segregation and contamination control. Pressure differentials must be continuously monitored, and airflow direction should be clearly understood and justified. In addition, HEPA filters must be periodically integrity tested, and the overall AHU performance should be reviewed through revalidation at defined intervals. These checkpoints together demonstrate that the AHU is operating in a controlled and compliant manner. Let me share a real audit experience. This is a real situation that many teams encounter during audits. The system is installed, qualified, and operating smoothly. There are no visible issues in day-to-day -day operations. Then the auditor asks a simple question. Please show me the airflow rationale document. When this document is missing or incomplete, it immediately raises concerns. Not because the system is failing, but because the logic behind the design has not been clearly documented. This highlights an important lesson. In GMP, control must not only exist, it must also be clearly explained and justified. So what is the biggest takeaway from all this? In pharmaceutical manufacturing, air must be treated just like any other critical raw material. Its quality directly influences the manufacturing environment and, ultimately, the quality of the product. Because AHUs are responsible for conditioning, filtering, and directing air, they play a central role in maintaining this quality. This is why AHU design, operation, and documentation require the same level of attention as other critical GMP systems. Let's conclude with a clear summary. To summarize, HVAC provides the infrastructure that supports the facility as a whole. AHUs, however, are the systems that actually execute GMP controls within clean rooms and controlled areas. When AHU design, zoning, and control philosophy are reviewed early, many potential compliance gaps can be avoided. Consistent documentation, monitoring, and periodic review ensure that these controls remain effective over time.
So here's the final question. As we conclude, this is the most important question every pharmaceutical facility should reflect on. Not during an audit, but before one. Are your AHUs designed with a clear GMP rationale? Is the logic behind zoning, airflow, and pressure clearly defined and documented? And most importantly, can your team confidently explain this logic to an auditor? Answering these questions honestly can make a significant difference during inspections. Thank you for staying with me till the end of this session. The intention of this discussion was not just to explain the difference between AHU and HVAC, but to highlight how this understanding directly influences GMP compliance and audit outcomes. In my experience at Pharma Health Insights, most AHU-related issues do not arise from lack of effort, but from early design assumptions and gaps in documented logic. When AHU philosophy is reviewed early and aligned with regulatory expectations, compliance becomes a built-in feature rather than a corrective exercise. If you found this discussion on AHU versus HVAC useful, I encourage you to like the video, share it with your colleagues, and subscribe to the channel for more practical GMP and compliance insights. These small actions help this content reach professionals who can benefit from it. Thank you once again, and I look forward to connecting with you in the next session.